doing a review. Um, and if you're not here, you probably saw my email and saw that tonight was optional, or you just saw the school's email. Um, so you guys still have your study set eight and your worksheet eight are due by Wednesday um, at no loss of points. And if you have outstanding, so study set celebration is still Wednesday. Um, if Wednesday you have an issue with power outage or anything, you should be contacting me. But by Wednesday, I think all this will be a memory. Um, it is over study set six, seven, and eight. So our theme is oxygen. So these are our oxygen containing compounds. So alcohols and then alcohol friends. So those are the thiols, the phenols, the ethers, and then the aldehydes and ketones. Um, it's a similar format as the last test. So you'll have some drawings, some, I said the word test. I mean, it's the same as the last celebration. We're celebrating oxygen. So you're gonna have some drawings, you're gonna have some naming, you're gonna have the no messing up names. Yeah, so it's similar to this. Um, I think it's four pages, just cause I give you more space than I do on here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go through this. The other thing I want to mention, though, is about labs. So I do realize there are a couple of people who did not turn in their egg lab. Um, and so uh, oh, uh, like, let's try for next Saturday. You, you don't lose a point this time because of the power outage. I don't know who lost power and who's remodeling. Um, the got oxygen lab, there's a couple of you who are still finishing that up. And then yeah so this is the lab you can tell i was in lab i made a mess um that i just posted and and what it is is there's seven tests that i go through including the tolens test um and show you the silver mirror and so each one's like about two minutes uh and a distinguishing characteristic and then you fill out a page which i don't have here um and so I did post that today and the video is on our YouTube channel. So that is what is due Saturday. The other thing I wanted to mention is usually we're in person and I would have every day, every time we went to lab, I would have gone up to each one of you and said, hey, do you have a topic yet? And I don't have that advantage, I realized today. And not a single person has picked a topic yet. And so that would be something wonderful to start thinking about. Um, like next weekend, this coming weekend and over the next week, because you will have to give me a topic at some point next week, because we will, this is the seventh week and the papers and presentations are in the 10th week. Um, and so you should talk. You can send me an email if you have an idea. All right, so let's go ahead and go through this and you can just listen, you can follow along. I recommend that you reprint this or that you do this. If, you, if you're if you not here, um, that I recommend that you stop the video, that you try each section and then you can watch part of the video, but you actually try it and see, you know, if you got it right. So um, the key is always the ending because the ending is the functional group or the family and you do want to be careful that you notice this is cyclohexane. So we're going to draw our hexagon. And since it's a cyclo, the thiol must be at carbon number one. And that is an SH. So that's what thiol means is sulfur. And then at number three, whichever direction you draw, you get an isobutyl. So an isobutyl has that kink, that elbow, um, before you branch off. So there's four total carbons. All right, here we go. What's the distinguishing feature of a thiol? I know this is a question later on, but. They stink it like is. a skunk or like a rotten egg. It stinks, yeah. Um, so skunk smell. All right, uh, the ether. So ether means you have an oxygen in the middle. And then on one side, we have a sec butyl. It doesn't matter which side you do what. Um, a sec butyl 
you have four in a row and you're attached to the second one. So you can do a zigzag, you can make it into a C. A phenyl with the YL means a benzene ring. Make sure you put the ring in it. All right. Uh, what's the distinguishing feature of an ether? You may have all answered. Just always take a deep breath. Give somebody a chance to answer. But um, ethers really don't. They're gonna. They're not gonna have a reaction. Um, but their distinguishing feature is they're very volatile. So their aroma is is often actually very fragrantish. But it's it's in a volatile way. I don't know how to explain that. Um, it's kind of like a, a sweet, like an overly sweet smell, but um, that would not be the smells. They all start smelling the same in lab. Um, so smell is not, except like vials, that's really distinct. All right, phenol is, make sure you put that ring and the OH. And M means what? One, three. And so an ethyl at number three. All right, and then pentanel. So five, uh, your aldehyde is at number one, which either end can be number one. You can show it just like that. Um, you can show the hydrogen. So I noticed on those of you who are showing me your worksheet, about half of you show the hydrogen, but half of you don't. Um, and then at number two, you would show a methyl. Um, you would always write the H in. You wouldn't show it as a line. All right. Um, I do want to show one other thing here. And it just has to be with how I keep showing my zigzags that probably if I was a really good teacher, because my zag is ending up pointing down, my oxygen technically would point down. But as you notice, I keep pointing it up. Um, not a big deal to me, but that would probably be a better way of representing that picture. All right, we're going to name these. There are two OHs. They both have to be on the chain. So uh, since this one's at number one, we get to start up there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we have this extra CH3 at number four. So we'll get a 4-methyl, and we have 7, so heptanol, heptane diol, and we do need to put the numbers, so 1,4, heptane diol. Uh, this would be a really good question. As they may remember, there is a, instead of saying diol, there is another ending. Nobody uses it as a common ending, but it's glycol. So if you ever like in your reading or something in life run into a glycol, it just means it's a diol. It's a double alcohol. It's a common name. So 4-methyl, 1,4-heptane diol. All right. So does anybody know what's wrong with my next picture? Did I do that anywhere else? This, this is technically an ester. That's like a teacher saying, oops, because we have not learned esters yet. So um, I know myself well enough to, I'm, I've always been in person giving tests and organic chemistry, it's really easy to make an oops. So hopefully whoever, um, if, if you run into something, I will be on Zoom on Wednesday. Uh, I'll be on Zoom at actually four o'clock because there's several people who have to take it early. Um, and so if you are one of those or if you just like want to do it at four o'clock, um, just come on and I will actually email it to you. Otherwise, the celebration will show up at six o'clock in the folder and you just take it. Uh, it's always been a one hour test everybody's always finished in an hour, so like the last one. And so uh, most of you were done in 
much under the time, but um, you do get two hours. It does need to be in by eight o'clock. And I do ask that you come and check in on Zoom when you submit it to make sure I can see it because there's been some issues. I don't know if it's been anybody in this class, but I can't, I can't see the handwriting and stuff. Um, so we're going to fix this and we'll just get rid of this oxygen. And we'll make that, we'll just make this a long chain. So let's just do that. That's how your teacher is going to name it. So we'll all name it this way. So now it's no longer an oops. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, yeah, so known and known. Three, known and known. I just wanted to have a known and known on this. All right, the next one is ketone. We're going to name it two ways. So first way is we will number one, two, three, four. And this is our methyl at number three. So technically, we did this one on the homework. Uh, that methyl could only be at three and the ketone could only be at two. So methyl butanone. And the other way, do in blue, we circle this. That's our ketone. So our ending is ketone. And then you name each side. So this is an isopropyl. And the other side's a methyl. So we just say isopropyl, methyl, ketone. And I'm going to just keep going unless somebody has a question. Oh, this is a good one. Wow. All right. So it's an aldehyde. So the aldehyde gets preference. It is number one. It is never a side group. So one and double bonds between carbons also have to be um, part of our naming. So it's a one, two, three. This is the side group at number three. That's the phenyl. And then this is a side group. And so we're just going to number it. It's just one, two, three, four, five. So that's a pentyl. That goes first. So two pentyl. That's that guy. Uh, three phenyl. So that's my side groups. And then my main part is propene L. Now, if you said two propene L, I would not mark it wrong. But um, since there's only three total carbons and carbon one has the double bonded O, has the aldehyde, aldehydes never get a number, um, that double bond between the carbons has to be at two to three. All right, the names are just all wrong, so we're going to rename them. I wonder if that is silver. No, maybe. All right. So we're going to make a sketch. Hex. Aldehyde would be at number one. Uh, so one, two, three, four. And then we do a sec butyl, which is just four in a row. But at the second one. So we just don't have the longest chain. And this is where. Kristen's gift to me is just awesome as a teacher. I used to be on the board um, using colored chalk, but colored chalk doesn't erase from the board, and so I'd hurt my shoulder. Um, and so this is just like a dream come true. So we're going to renumber one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we have a methyl and we have an ethyl. So four ethyl. You guys actually did really good with these last. Um, on the last celebration, that's what we call them. Four ethyl, five methyl, and then seven is heptin L. Um, the other quick comment I did want to make, it was something in my other class, I believe, but absolutely, you can use your notes, um, but you want to study. So ideally, you don't have to ever look at your notes, but maybe for one question. Um, <clears throat> yeah. 
because I can't regulate that. So somebody else will be doing it. All right, phenol, skip over to C. So you have a benzene with an OH. Para means it's across from it. And oh, we got an issue here. There is no way you can have two methyls at the same corner in a benzene ring. You can't have two things at the same corner. So there are several possible answers that I would take. Um, my, my thinking is trying to think like a gnome. Imagine that is I, I can actually tell the snow is melting because I have a gnome in my backyard and you could only see the very tip of his knot. And then this afternoon you can see like more of it. So I figured that's how I'm going to know as each each day, at each hour of tomorrow, probably even tonight that you can probably see his whole knot. Um, probably they put the methyls in the pair position on the phenol. Um, so you could really put the methyls at any two numbers you want. Uh, you would just have to number it. The phenol gets the number one. And so how I just drew it, this would be two, three, four, five. So we'd have to have a two, five dimethyl phenol. You could really put the methyls at any two numbers um, and it would have worked. Um, yeah. All right. There's other possibilities too. That's why I'm on Zoom, so you can always come on and ask. All right, let's try B. So butanol, and they're putting the OH at number four, and at number two, we're going to do an isobutyl. So again, isobutyl is where you have this kink before it does the little antenna. Um, and so the OH cannot be at number four. The OH must be at the lowest number possible. So in this case, it's going to be at number one two, three, and then four, five, six. And then we have a methyl and a methyl. So three, five dimethyl. And then one, looks like it's hexanol. Yep. All right. Um, if you make your sketch on the paper that you turn in, so in the past, this wasn't an issue because people took the test in front of me. Uh, I can see your sketch. So what happened on the last celebration is a couple people just put names and their names weren't right. And there was no sketch there. And so you just got it wrong. Um, the people who had a sketch there, if I can see the sketch and see what your mistake was, then you will often get part credit. So make your sketch on the page. Um, and then that way I can see your work, um, right? That That's kind of a personality thing. Some people want everything to be perfect and neat, but that can often. All right, so butanone, uh, they're putting the ketone at number three, and at number two, they're doing the tert butyl. So numbering, the ketone has to be the lowest number possible. So one, two, three, and then we go up four, five. So we have a methyl, a methyl, a methyl. All right, so three, four, four, trimethyl. And then two pentanone. Questions? on anything from the first page. Right. Reactions and properties. Do you guys, I can pause for five minutes and give you a chance to try it or I can just keep going. Is anybody who's here, here? I'm good either way. All right, I'll just keep going. So, one butanol. And again, you can draw your OH at either end, but it's at number one. Uh, and so, one, two, three, it becomes this is the one that has two steps. 
So we get an aldehyde. If you like, you can show the hydrogen here. And then you keep oxidizing. And so this is where you get that oxygen. I'll put it in a color to help. Um, so you add an oxygen. The H is still there. It's still the same H, but you gain an oxygen. So it gains an oxygen in the second step. And in the first step, it loses hydrogen. So it's an either or, but that's what it means by two steps. A primary alcohol goes through two steps. And again, when we did this originally, I only did the first step and kept saying, we'll get to the other step. We're there now. So primary alcohol is two steps. Uh, we're going to, this, this is the carboxylic acid, the butanoic acid. We did this one on the study set. Um, all right, this one, H2SO4, this is dehydrate. Oh, by the way, two-step oxidation. All right, dehydrate. Dehydrate. Um, if, if it was me taking the celebration, um, it would be the reactions that I would have, like, I would make a page or take a page, like, from this, this, this practice. Um, my students from previous years would be sitting there going, oh, my God, they get to have notes. All right. You guys are so spoiled. Dehydrate means we're going to lose water. So you're going to end up with that plus water, which can really help. Uh, so on 2-butanol, wherever you want, in the middle is your OH, that H2SO4. And the other symbol for heat is the triangle and this is where you don't have to do it this way but I noticed a lot of people were and they were getting it right the OH is gone put a little star there and this is where you can go to the left or the right so you do your zigzags twice and we can either get one butene or two butene And so you're going to tell me which one's the major. And it is. The two butene. Yeah, towards the middle. So this is our major. As opposed to one above where it just keeps going. This one, you get two things at the same time plus the water. So you get a mix of both of them, but more you get more of the two butene. All right. Uh, butanol just means that we have our carbons and our OH. And this is the exchange. So the HCl, this is Lucas or an exchange. And so we're going to exchange, we're going to end up, we still have the tertiary, but instead of the OH, we now have the chlorine. We should write as green because chlorines are green always. So that's the color of the gas. Um, yeah, and you can say plus H2O if you like, um, but the OH came off. Uh, this is the one, just a quick note, is this is the one that the tertiary alcohols are the most reactive. I showed this in the video for the lab. So the lab is not due until Saturday, but it may be worth doing it and turning it in Wednesday because it goes through that, um, this question number 10, the distinguishing test, it, it walks through them um, or at least shows you a visual. Um, for them, for what the oxidation looks like, what the uh, Lucas 
And so tertiary alcohols are an immediate cloudy. This is more notes for you. And so on the handout, um, you just write what you see, like in one or two words, like orange cloudiness or camo green color. Uh, and then what does that mean? That in, in this case, it's immediately cloudy for the tertiary butanol when I do the Lucas. And you would say it's a tertiary in the explanation or what does it mean, tertiary alcohol. Um, so then I do two unknowns. And so you kind of have to figure out it ends up being really obvious. I just picked two random ones and they were pretty easy to figure out what they are. All right. So cyclopentanone. And plus this means we're doing a reduction. Means we're adding hydrogen. And so we're going to go to the OH. So there's our hydrogen that we added. So this is our hydrogen in nickel is just the catalyst. Um, any questions on the reactions? All right, so this is where I give you the product and you tell me how to get there. So cyclohexanol, uh, we just did it. We just did it with that. So when you do this one, there's actually two ways to do this one. But we'll do this one that we just had, which is, um, so we'd start with the ketone, so cyclohexanone. Does anybody know the other way we did it? It would have been on the last midterm. There's another way we made alcohols. No, this is an interesting question. G and H, they're exact opposites. So on H, to make the ketone, we would start with the alcohol. Um, so the mistake I made on here just now is I did not write, it wants you to show the catalyst, show everything you need. So to go from the ketone to here, we're adding hydrogens and our catalyst is gonna be nickel, like it was just up there. And then on this one, to go to the double bonded oxygen, that's, oxidation. Um, on G, there's actually two ways to do this one. So I will show you the second way, which is also where you, it's not a two-step again, it's two different ways that you can start with um, an ene, an alkene, a cyclohexene, uh, and you would add water, and you would also get that. Uh, and this would be in the presence of H2SO4. That was on our previous celebration, but I just figured I'd mention it. All right, number six. Um, and for those of you who are here, I actually recommend, I don't know if you're trying to write down stuff or kind of making a few notes, but um, for all of you, I recommend doing this again, going back your study sets, and hopefully you, you've been making notes on your study sets. Um, your worksheets are good practice too. And you can go through the notes also. Um, Vincent told me he rewatched the videos. And I know, um, I just realized Vincent reminds me of my top student from last year. And it was um, in the summer when I started having to videotape everything. And and um, people were not happy with their test scores. And, and they asked him what he did. And he said, I went back and watched all the videos. And, and you have my blessings for having to do that. All right, on the first one, this is not an ester, and that's why there's this extra kink here. Um, so there's an extra carbon between there. This is a ketone. We're not naming this. We're just identifying what it is. And these two positions are ethers. So on the test, there is something like this, and it would have like a little box by here, and it would say like letter D. And then there'll be a blank. Um, and that's why I'll be on Zoom, because always I've been right there and you can see, um, you can come up and ask. But this this is an aldehyde. Uh, and this is also my reminder that you're all writing a paper and doing a presentation, because presentations are really fun. This one's worth um, more than the previous one. The paper is longer than the previous one. Um, I've wrote up 
that what you had to do, and I don't think I posted it, so I will post it tomorrow. Um, but yeah, you have to pick a famous molecule. Sorry, a molecule that you're going to talk about and has to have two studies. So I've had many pig people pick cinnamon. We've been talking about this with other things. Uh, this is an alkene, the double bond. If I had an arrow to this, this is a, either a benzene, um, an aromatic, or an arene. So they often call it that A R E N E. So um, aromatic ene, even though it's not actually an ene. All right, this OH is not an alcohol because it's on a benzene. That is a phenol. This is an oxygen between carbons. That's an ether. And that is an aldehyde. When you pick your molecule, um, again, you got two weeks to think up one and you can email me or uh, it will show up in an assignment where you're going to write down what you're thinking of. Um, pick something that you want to learn more about. So if you're like a huge fan of cinnamon, yeah, it has some of them, some of the spices have a really fascinating history. Um, that's the whole spice trade. All right. Oh, some of the funnest molecules we haven't gotten to yet. So often next week, people get really inspired. Um, if you weren't inspired by all the spices that we talked about. Uh, and that's when we get into the esters and the carboxylic acids, and then especially the nitrogen groups. Um, so the amines and the amide kind of a shame I don't do them until week nine, but um, that is some of the, um, if you haven't, if you don't like your topic, you can absolutely change it. And often a lot of people change it when they start talking about the means and amides. All right, we're doing the boiling point. So you'll be comparing two. If you see an OH, you're picking that one and it's the H bond. So the H bonds are the highest. Um, if you have two that have H bonds, it is the one butanol. Anybody remember why? Over the T butanol. If you drew them. Is it because surface area? It is. Isabella, thank you. Surface area. I think this is the first time she's ever gotten on. I'm so excited. It is surface area, so um, that the one butanol has, we should say a larger surface area. Um, whereas the T butanol is more compact. All right, the next one, we're gonna pick the phenol because phenols can H bond. Uh, just more for your notes for you to realize, benzaldehyde is polar. Polar is going to be in the middle category. So on the next one, the ether does win. Um, our ether wins. It is polar. Uh, the polar always wins against the nonpolar. So the pentane is nonpolar, only carbons and hydrogens. The nonpolar is the lowest. So if you want a little hierarchy, we have nonpolar, we have polar, and then we have H bonds. So H bond specifically means you're gonna see the OH. Polar means you have an oxygen, and then the nonpolar is carbon and hydrogen only. So this is highest boiling point. Uh, we will be adding to that list. There's actually two higher than this, um, but that's, not until after this week, so that's good news. Um, questions? So in each pair, 
Vincent, I don't know, actually, if you're still there, you might have gotten, you haven't answered a bonus question. Still here. Oh, okay. You, you didn't get a bonus point yet, so. Not... <laughs> soon, soon. That's okay. That's okay. I just realized, though, you used to be the first one to answer all the time, but. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. We are going for water soluble. And um, so, of course, this you're looking for an oxygen. Uh, this one, you could say polar or you could just say this one and this one is nonpolar or you could use the word hydrophobic versus hydrophilic. So this guy is hydrophobic. So if there are only carbons and hydrogens, they won't be our choice ever. All right, on the next one, they are both polar. So we are going to look for which one gets to be more water soluble. We can't look at polar, they're in the same category. Anybody? I'm gonna pick the first one because it's um, smaller surface. Smaller surface area or fewer carbons? Either answer. You don't don't have to give me both. Just give me the one you like. Uh, this is the one where if we have too many carbons. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to mention. Just to make sure you all know that um, I your worksheets. If I always if if there's a note, it's either in the box or sometimes I actually write directly on your worksheet. Um, a number of you come early or stay after and have me check your worksheet, but if there was something I overlooked or something, I'd leave a note for you. Um, or if you didn't have the time to have it checked. So please do look at those before uh, Wednesday. And again, if if we still have power outages Wednesday, um, you know, I guess anything's possible anymore. Um, just communicate with me and and we'll figure out when to have you do your celebration so that we can all move on next week. But all right. On this one, they both H bond, right? Um, by the way, with water solubility, H bond and polar are similar. So we are looking at surface area of really, um, we're looking at hydrophobic rules out, and then we're looking at surface area. So in this case, it is the T butanol because it's the smaller surface area. They both are buttes, so they both have four carbons, so you're looking at surface area. All right, um, there is a section like this, and I'm really happy it's on here because I would have forgot, uh, which is the isomers. So this was on your last celebration also. Um, in the last one, it had like in the boxes, some of them were pictures and you had to look at it. So the difference now is that it's with, um, a is not. Why? I'm just asking yes, no here. I'm not going to ask you why, but uh, the ketone has a double bond. If you have a double bond, that changes the number of oxygens. I'm sorry. It changes the number of hydrogens, so different hydrogens. Um, and so ketones and aldehydes both have a double bond, so they could come out the same, but a ketone and an alcohol, um, they are not going to be isomers. Um, so on B, sure, they both have three carbons. They both have one carbon oxygen double bond, um, so they would work. And D is no, I'm sorry, C. Oh, I don't even know my alphabet right now. Um, which, what, what happens on C that makes them different? One of them's a cyclo, so it has one less hydrogen. Phenol is a cyclo too. Um, it has a benzene. The benzene, benzene, so the carbons are the same. They both have six, right? Uh, they're in a ring, but the phenol, because it's a benzene, 
it has fewer hydrogens, it has a lot fewer hydrogens. Like it lost the hydrogen at every position. So it has six fewer hydrogens. That again is, is more to help you visually to think about them too. All right. So 10 and then down here was just more of me saying the same thing. Um, so if you're in this, this is, yeah, if we have 2-butanol and diethyl ether, uh, the easiest thing, there's a couple of answers you could do here. Just pick one. Oxidation is a color change. And so the ether does not oxidize. Um, and that's where I was mentioning earlier. So the lab for this week, so lab seven, I mislabeled it first time I uploaded it. So it's QA, which stands for qualitative analysis. So it's a yes, no. Uh, the, the ether, so this one changes color, turns a camo green, but this, this one definitely oxidizes. Ethers do not. Um, do not do a smell test unless it's extremely distinct, which is this one. The thiol is going to be a skunk smell. So don't just say stinky, because to me, they all stink. Um, but it's it's really, um, they all have similar smells after a while. All right, aldehyde. What's the big test for an aldehyde? Yeah, either tolens. I don't know who said that. Tolens, which is known as the silver mirror, or um, that's the visual you'll see. So aldehydes will do the silver mirror. And it is, it's a really distinguishing, unfortunately, it's like four minutes of the video as you guys watching me go through. It's, it's the longest test. Um, this, that you guys would always have different groups and whoever got Tolens first, they would still be on Tolens and everybody else would be waiting to do that one. Um, but all the other tests are only like a one, one minute and this one takes like 20 minutes. All right, and for phenol, the thing is uh, litmus paper pink. Oops, you can say litmus pink or that it's an acid. So of what we've talked about so far, they are the only ones that will have a pH other than neutral. All the other ones are gonna be neutral. Um, so this was the phenol for the acid test. Uh, the aroma, at this point, the only one we wanna do are the thiols or a skunk. Um, the larger aldehydes do have a sweet smell. So, but an aldehyde, Again, they all start having a really sweet smell after a while. Um, uh, so I would not recommend that. But the larger ones, benzaldehyde is like the smell of almonds. They, they say fragrant rather than sweet. We're going to see the stinkiest ones, thiols aren't actually the stinkiest ones uh, after this midterm. And it's a distinct stinkiness. One is the smell of goats, which apparently are the stinkiest smell. Um, I personally have not gone up to a goat and smelled them, but uh, oxidize. There are four things that oxidize. So primary alcohols and secondary alcohols. Um, thiols will oxidize. There were no thiols in the lab, thank goodness. Um, and the other one is the aldehyde. Uh, and so when I actually do the oxidation test, the aldehyde test is one of the first tests. So you roll, you've already identified any aldehydes. I actually oxidized an aldehyde and I was totally fascinated. I didn't explain it very well in the video because I was really fascinated by what happened. Is it oxidized and you ended up with a totally different color than you do with the primary and secondary alcohols because it oxidized so fast, um, but it gives a precipitate with the oxidation. It's it's hard. You see it in the video. 
Um, and so I don't know. It was it. I didn't explain it very well because I was amazed at what happened. All right, I think that's it. Cause there's no last page. Is there any questions? And again, I will be on at four o'clock. So if you have questions and stuff, um, and if you're somebody who has to take it early, just come on, and I will email it to you. Otherwise. Um, You guys have this. You've all got this. And do the lab early and get it over with. Then you have your weekend off. I'm going to stop.